Hey folks, let's learn some more about the oil and gas industry. All right, this show will be answering emails, so let's just jump right to it. Number one, what do you think is going to happen in the offshore industry in the U.S. in the next couple of years? You know, that's an interesting question. There's a couple of things going on that I'm a little worried about. First is uh, the government has not revoked the exporting crude law, which means we cannot export crude in this country. Second thing is we haven't increased refinery capacity. So you're seeing an increased supply of domestic crude production, but there's nowhere for it to go. Just like it happened with natural gas a few years ago. I really think that the fracking fields have been oversold. I think there's a lot of wells out there that are drilled that are not completed. Um, I know for a fact by looking at the statistics that there's less drill rigs this year and last year, but production keeps on going up. So to me, that's a perfect storm to have the bottom drop out of the price of crude. And what's the first projects going to be killed or put on hold? The very expensive ultra deep water and deep water projects in the Gulf of Mexico. So I don't want it to happen, but I see it coming. This, hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, number two, you talk a lot about the oil and gas industry being resistant to change. How do you overcome that from a sales point of view? All right, so the way you overcome that is you actually have to get the company that you're dealing with to buy in what you're putting together, right? The best way to do that is something called a POC, a proof of concept. Basically, you go to the client and go, look, I don't want to risk an enterprise failure. I don't want to fail. I know you don't want to fail. Let's do this in a small scale to select group of users on your side. I'll bring the best and brightest from my side. I'll pay half, you pay half, and we'll do a proof of concept. What that, real, what that does in reality is it gets your client's top people involved in building this solution or product. And when they're finished with it, they have ownership in it. So guess who sells it to the company? Not you and your sales team, these guys that work for the company. So if you need some help with that, reach out to me. I'll kind of walk you through it. We, we do it all the time. It works fantastic. Um, number three, what's going on with Keystone? It's so screwed up. Look, it's been five years, five reports. There's been zero jobs created, zero money realized from it. The, our political system needs to get off its high horse and realize this is one of the best things for Americans. You know, we got, once Keystone is lit, you're looking at 42,000 new jobs plus 3.4 billion, not million, billion with a B, added to our GDP. We just need to get it done. Number four, what's a spar rig? A spar rig is an offshore rig that's kind of like an iceberg, right? Most of the rig is below the surface and you don't see it, and all you see is the top side and the controls. Um, it's, it's a really good way to work deep water. They're very stable, they're very safe. Um, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's one of the bigger tools in the global deep water plays. It's a spar rig. Um, number five, my sales team's match has set up meetings with oil and gas professionals, yet we really struggle moving to the next part of the buying process. Thoughts? Yeah, I can tell you exactly what you're doing. You can meet with people all week long that work in the oil and gas industry that have budget, but you're talking to the wrong people. You have to get a laser focus on the problem that you solve and who recognizes the value of having that problem solved. And that's who you need to talk to. I know it's great that you can talk to all these other people, but really you're wasting your time. In the oil and gas industry, it's actually better for a sales team to figure out quickly who they don't want to spend time with so they can concentrate with the people they do want to spend time with. Number six. Uh, thanks for chatting with me and my manager at OTC a couple of weeks ago. What was the most noteworthy thing that you saw at this year's show? So the most noteworthy thing isn't something that I saw. It's something that happened. Social media. Oh, my God. Tweets and LinkedIn and all the um, uh, Facebooks. I just cannot believe that OTC drew that much social media attention. It's about time. This industry has always lagged behind what the rest of the industries do. But it was really great to see. And then finally... If you missed out on those 19,000 contacts that we promised, the oil and gas contacts, we could throw a link on, the, on this show uh, so, you, so you can actually download them for yourself. So hopefully this helped. We will see you next time.